Hi, I'm Adam with Thunderbotics Network, and I'm standing here with 868 Tech Hounds. The Tech Hounds was already coming off of a phenomenal season with two district event wins and a division finalist at their world championship division, but now they're coming back with another phenomenal robot. So far, they have made it to the be the overall first pick of the event, looking phenomenal all throughout quals and finished rank fourth. Uh, here they're going to show some of the great decisions they made from their passive funnel into their end effector, all the way into how they you know manage their algae and how they manage to avoid many absolute encoders. Here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. So Sierra, why don't you tell us a little more about how the coral scores and the path it takes to, you know, reach the reef. Yeah, so coral enters through the passive funnel right here. The funnel centers the coral. It can come in from many different angles, but it works quite consistently. It then goes on to the manipulator. The smaller wheels here in the manipulator are what grab the coral. And then the cone here is what centers it. So it's in the same position every time. This then pivots through the elevator. We also have a figure eight belt here so that we can avoid gears. It's simple and it hasn't worn down too much. Once through the elevator, the elevator can go up to any position needed and it can score on all four levels. To handle algae, we have a four bar intake right here that can intake algae from the ground. The manipulator then comes out, the elevator would go up a bit and the large four inch squish wheels right here grab the algae. Once we have it, the elevator pulls it up through the four bar and we can score up in the net and in the processor. We can also intake algae with just the manipulator right here, and we can grab it off of the reef. Thank you. So now going on to Nate, why don't you tell us a little more about that elevator? Now, you guys chose a different approach, showing with the continuous elevator. Can you tell us a little more about why you made that decision? So, of course. One decision behind our continuous elevator is that at any given point, there's less mass moving and it can accelerate faster. That enables us to get that really short cycle time and up down stow motion that we want. Sierra, can you help me move the elevator up so that we can take a look at the gearbox? Let's see. So the whole uh, pivot and manipulator assembly weighs about 10 pounds. And you can see down here, we have this dual spool contra rotating gearbox on two Krakens. If you want to take a closer look, they're geared together that if one Kraken fails, it can still move. Um, and it's, it's only a three to one ratio, which is extremely fast for a continuous elevator. Of course, it also sounds pretty nice if you want to drop it. Go ahead. It sounds Durable great. too. Yes. We went through a lot of testing with this and ultimately it's taken a lot of design to get the hard stops right, the pulleys right so that they don't break anymore. Going on to our end game, we have this funnel climber. Through here, the cage will go in through this funnel and latch onto this hook. Uh, the pivot will move up here, and the algae intake will go out, of course, to facilitate that. You can see over on the far side of the bot, it's very open there. Unlike a lot of other teams here, which have a kind of pointy climber where you have to align it very precisely, this uh, minimizes that, so we have a sub eight second climb. Once the cage is in here, we use two Kraken X60s with a nine to one reduction to pull this Dyneema string, which winches it down. We have this little ratcheting wrench right here to lock it, and then it can easily be folded down to decline. You'll notice that a lot of our mechanisms are very front heavy. The elevator, pivot, algae intake. We had to actually balance the climb out with some eight pound steel in our bumpers uh, so that it lays flat, and you can see that in our matches. On the drivetrain, we use these really custom yellow TPU wheels. Over the summer, we went through about four like main designs and then countless iterations of this final design to get the most grip on the field. Nice. Thank you again, Nate. So now we're going to move over to Gavin. So we can tell us a little bit more about some of the software side. Now, some of the key things you pointed out is you have an auto aim, you have some LEDs to kind of signal to your driver, your singular driver at that, how to, you know, what position it's in and different things like that. 
and you've made an interesting decision to avoid any absolute encoders on this robot. All right, so I'll start with the vision. So in our front of our bot right here, uh, we have two cameras. I decided to put two cameras here to get a better view of the tags on the reef because this is the side of the bot that faces the reef to score. And so we use these cameras to do our auto align, which um, how we do it is we calculate the pose that our bot needs to be away from the reef in order to score each um, each level. So when our driver is driving, he'll drive to wherever he wants to score and he'll drive like 90% of the way there. And then uh, he can hit a button and then the bot will calculate the closest reef branch to the bot currently and it'll automatically move to that branch and then move to the pose that will score for that branch. And then uh, moving on to our LEDs, let me turn on the bot. And they take a second to turn on, but our LEDs, they give a lot of important information to our driver. And so whenever uh, he's trying to auto align, uh, the LEDs will show him what level coral he's trying to score, for example. And then uh, it'll show that until, he, until the bot actually gets to the position where it's good and when it actually reaches the pose. And then the LEDs will turn green to let him know that he can score because the bot is in the correct position. So you can see here are LEDs. They're not just used for the driver. Uh, they can be used whenever we're setting up for a match because before each match, what we do is we put all the mechanisms of the robot in their correct zero position where they should start, as so. And then we decided this year not to use any absolute encoders because absolute encoders have been unreliable for us in the past. And so what we do instead is we have a little button board uh, which is connected to the digital inputs on our Rio. And so what we do is each button corresponds to a subsystem. And then when we press each button, it zeroes a specific subsystem. So we put it in a known position that is repeatable each time we start a match. And then the LEDs, they will change to green, as you saw, once we know that every subsystem has been zeroed and is correct. And so that way we can mimic the effect of having an absolute encoder, which is repeatable positions for mechanisms without actually having to install absolute encoders and deal with them. Uh, and it's not just absolute encoders that we decided to do away with. For our manipulator, uh, we decided not to add any extra sensors like beam brakes because last year we had reliability issues with them too. Like they detect a note where there wasn't one, they wouldn't detect a note where there was one. And so what we did this year is we just did current spike uh, detection instead. So whenever the manipulator intakes a game piece, uh, the motor will draw a bigger current. And so we detect those spikes and then that way we know if the manipulator has a game piece without needing any extra sensors. And it's been working really well for us. And so this year we decided to just really minimize the amount of sensors that we have to minimize the points of failure that we have. Thank you all again for showing off your beautiful 2025 season robot Hydra. Uh, you will be able to catch Tech Hounds uh, both at the Washington District Event Week 5, the uh, State Championship Week 6, and then quite possibly the World Championship in Houston. Thank you all and have a wonderful rest of your season. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free, scan the QR code, or go to altair.com contest for further details. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.